Hey everyone, on behalf of Edupedia, I would like to welcome you on the course on grade 11 math. This is the introductory video of the course and we'll be going through the topics that we would cover in this course. We won't go into the details of the topics in this video, but we'll definitely touch everything that we will be learning in this video series. Pretty much everything that you might see in a grade 11 course will be covered in this course. Of course, there are some differences from country to country and from curriculum to curriculum, but I think pretty much everything will be, will be covered in this course. Uh, as for the format of this course, we will be making short 15 minute videos elaborating on the concepts of the topic under discussion. This, would, this way it would be easier for you to understand the concept and also would be easier for you to revise the concepts if you want to go if you want to go back to the concepts and do that in the future. Every topic would start with a little background of the topic which would basically be the concepts related to the topic that you went through in the grade 9th or 10th. So that this way there are no gaps in the concepts that you're going to learn. And I would suggest that everyone who's watching that you should concentrate more on the concepts rather than rote learning the methodologies because sometimes what happens in math courses that I've seen is that students in order to get good grades they only try to learn how to solve the questions and they go through that but I would suggest that rather than solving the questions you try to understand the concepts behind the questions you try to understand why are we doing this of course I'll be elaborating on that as we go forward so this way you'll be learning this for your whole life Remember that whatever you learn that is uh, memorized, you're going to forget that in a few years. But your concepts are going to stay with you for your whole life. So try to concentrate on that. So we'll be beginning with complex numbers. And so as far as I think is, I don't think any one of you has gone through the topic in any, one of any, any of the previous classes. Or maybe you touch the concepts of imaginary numbers uh, in a very trivial way. Either way, we'll be starting with introduction to the numbers. Uh, basic numbers and then we'll go to the new types of numbers that is the complex numbers first of all is going to be the like i said the rational behind complex numbers in which i'll be explaining to you why we have complex numbers what is the need for complex numbers how did complex numbers come into being uh, why do we use complex numbers can anything be solved without complex numbers so basically pretty much everything that you need to know as to the why of the complex numbers after we're done with that, we'll be concentrating on uh, different properties of complex numbers, how complex numbers uh, are behave under different situations, how complex numbers are added, divided, subtracted, and multiplied. Once we're done with that, we'll be concentrating on the oper arithmetic operations between complex numbers and between complex numbers and other numbers. Uh, this way you can get a holistic view of what you can do with complex numbers and what complex numbers are needed and what complex equations and what complex uh, formulas are needed to solve complex numbers. Another really fun thing that we'll be doing uh, in this topic is that we're going to be plotting complex numbers. You all have been plotting real numbers till now on the x and the y plane. We'll be plotting complex number on the complex plane. So that's pretty new concept for anyone who's been uh, studying math for quite long. And complex number with respect to the complex number plane will be discussed. And also the difference between the complex plane and the real plane will be discussed. Once we're done with that, we'll come to the solution of quadratic equations. Now, you have to understand that the main reason why we even have complex numbers is because of quadratic equations. Once we are not able to solve quadratic equations, we come up with complex number to solve them. You'll see that as we go through on the course, uh, how that is true and how this is the reason we even have complex numbers in the first place. In the end, we'll come to the method of finding the square root of complex numbers. Uh, this don't be overwhelmed by anything I say right now. We'll go uh, through this in step by step 15 minute videos so that you can understand how it is done and uh, What is the way not only of course to understand what the whole concept behind this is but also to know how to solve the questions Of course, I said the more important thing is the concept But remember that solving the questions is also equally important. So we will be concentrating on that as well so once we are done with that we'll be moving on to coordinate geometry initially we'll only be talking about two dimensional geometry i'm pretty sure many many of you have already discussed that gone through that after we're done with the two dimensional uh, geometry we'll be moving on to the three dimensional geometry uh, in two dimensional geometry we'll go through concepts such as the slope of a line the angles between line and we'll be finding the distance of a point on the line and also the general location of the line with other concepts related to the lines uh, another concept related to the angles of the lines that we might form in a coordinate uh, plane. After we're done, like I said, with the two-dimensional geometry, we'll be going moving on to the three-dimensional geometry. 
we will be doing the same in the three dimensional geometry as well but the thing is that we won't be going into that much detail in three dimensional geometry in three dimensional geometry we will only be touching those concepts uh, we'll be touching uh, how to find the distance of two points in a three dimensional geometry just like we found it in the two dimensional geometry for straight lines once we're done with that we'll move on to the concept of conic sections in fact we'll be moving on to the section of uh, to conic sections before we go on to the th three dimensional geometry after we're done with the two dimensional geometry then we'll move on to the conic section and then we're going to go to the three dimensional geometry this way it's going to make more sense to you because uh, the conic sections well you can say that that is also in a two dimensional frame that is x and y so we'll be going through parabolas circles hyperbolas uh, we'll be plotting them on the x and the y plane so that's like a two dimensional geometry thing so i want you to get a like a complete view of the two dimensional geometry once we're done with that then we can go on to the three dimensional geometry otherwise it's going to be like two dimensional geometry is done and then we're going to go to the three dimensional geometry then go back to the two dimensional geometry so i don't want uh, that to happen plus coordinate geometry is per perhaps the uh, longest topic of this course so there will be a lot of videos in between so i don't want you for i don't want you to forget the uh, topics in between and that's why we're going to cover the two dimensional geometry first including the hyperbolas and the parabolas uh, and their uh, equations and their properties once we're done with that then we go on to the three dimensional geometry after finishing the coordinate geometry we'll be going on to linear inequalities now there are two types of inequalities that we that we will be covering uh, one is a solution for one variables and the other is for the two variables if you see on the slide over here there are also two types of linear inequalities given uh, basically two types of solutions to linear inequalities given one is the algebraic solution and the one is the graphical solution as for the algebraic solution we'll be dealing with only one variable over there so the one variable inequalities will be covered through algebra and the two variable uh, inequalities will be covered by the graphical solution of linear inequalities we'll find out how to find uh, the solution to the linear inequalities which have two variables in them and the way we're going to do that is through the graphical method uh, that I believe is that personally that that is much more better uh, than the algebraic solution for two variables of course and as for the one variable we'll be going through the algebraic solutions for that now a good, another good thing about this course is that you'll be introduced to probability and statistics you can see this course has to as the as this is broken down into two parts one is the part that we already covered and one is the part of probability and statistics so this is i think this is the first time many many of you would be going through probability and statistics so uh, we'll only be introducing probability and statistics in this course uh, by that I mean that there will be some part of probability and some part of statistics and we'll be going through uh, three different topics in probability and statistics and each topic will be introduced and some of its uh, concepts will be introduced of course in quite depth uh, but the applications of these concepts will be really simple. So uh, if a new concept is introduced in probability statistics the concept will be introduced uh, fully. On the other hand, it's simply only simple application of the concepts will be taught in this lecture so that you don't get overwhelmed with what we are going through right now, uh, what you're going through right now. And uh, you learn the concepts. And as you move forward and you, as you move forward in the new grade, you will le learn more complex concepts related to probability and statistics. So in permutation and combinations, we're going to be starting off with the fundamentals of funda uh, permutations and combinations. Uh, that is the first thing that we're going to do in probability and statistics. We'll start with the basics of counting. Uh, we're going to see something that is called the factorial. Uh, that's going to make your life really easy in real life as well because that has many real life applications. Once we're done with that, we're going to introduce the topic itself. That is the for permutation combination. In fact, the topic, well, the previous counting and the fundamentals are also part of the topic. So we'll be going through that. Once we're done with the permutation and combination, we'll be going through, as I said before, simple applications of permutation and combinations. Now, permutation and combinations is a really fun topic because you would see how permutation and combination relates to your real life. I mean, till now, coordinate geometry, uh, linear inequalities, and complex numbers, all of that you will be solving in your exams. You will be going through uh, your physics and engineering. Uh, by their help but as for the real life scenarios are concerned that is how to find combination of uh, different vegetables how to find combinations of how to arrange students in a class and all of the that stuff that is where permutation combinations come in handy 
so this is going to be a really fun topic because we're going to come up with scenarios in real life you're not going to see if that there you see anything like if there's a plane and if there's a hyperbola in it which is all fun but over here we're going to talk about if there's six chairs and there are three female and male students how are you supposed to find uh, the best arrangement that there's a male and a female student sitting together or how are you supposed to find that this particular male is not sitting on this particular female so these questions that come into your mind every day will be solved by the help of permutation and combinations once we are done with permutation and combinations we are going to go over the, the binomial theorem uh, like all the topics we will be going through uh, the rationale behind the binomial theorem that is why do we need the binomial theorem why is it the way it is uh, what is the point of the binomial theorem how did, how did this come into existence uh, where do we use binomial theorem uh, that is the whole, all it comes in under the rationale of the binomial theorem once we're done with the binomial theorem we'll be introducing you to the Pascal's triangle which uh, of course let's just keep it till like when we get to it i'll explain to you then what the pascal triangle pascal's triangle is and in then we'll be coming with simple small real life examples of the application of binomial theorem just like permutation and combination this theorem can also be used in real life after we're done with this we'll be going through sequences and series now as far as sequence series series are concerned we'll be looking at two types of series that is the arithmetic series and the geometric series and even inside the arithmetic and ge geometric series we'll be looking at two things related to them that is the arithmetic progression and the arithmetic mean and the geometric pro progression and the geometric mean i'm pretty sure all of you already know what arithmetic mean is so that's nothing new the name speaks for itself so we'll after we're done with that we'll be going through the progression part and the geometric progression and the means part and uh, we'll be uh, touching special sums as well now uh, let's just leave it uh, at that over here then uh, let's get to special sums when we come to it this is the end of probability and statistics part and this is also the end of the first part of the course there's one more topic left and that is uh, the proof of mathematical induction now this is more of a philosophy of math topic than an application of math topic uh, the we'll go through the principles of induction uh, how you are you are supposed to do the induction or why uh, some form of induction may be wrong and has how how something could be called as a mathematical induction uh, after we're done with that we'll be going through the um, process of mathematical induction I mean first we'll see what are the principles behind mathematical induction uh, what are we supposed to do for mathematical induction and then how is it done that will be the process behind mathematical induction in this topic this is the last topic that we're going to cover in this course uh, another thing as you can see on the slide is natural numbers I'm pretty sure each and every one of you already knows where natural numbers are uh, we'll be going through natural numbers once again just so that you could you know if you have done it before so that's good I mean you can revise it over here uh, other other than that we'll be going through natural numbers with respect to principles of mathematical induction so there is a catch over here so there is something new that you're going to study there's something new that you're going to learn in this course so that's pretty much it for now uh, we're going to officially start with the first video uh, and the first topic that we're going to cover is that of the complex number numbers and uh, we're going to start with the type of numbers like i told you so as you can see this pretty much covers everything uh, in this course uh, in the in the grade 11 curriculum remember one thing that i would like to say once again is that please try to understand the concepts behind this these videos aren't going anywhere it's not like you have to run behind the teacher it's not like uh, you're not gonna hear what i said again so these videos are here on our channel and they're gonna stay there so please go through the concepts again and again if you don't understand everything will be covered in great detail by that i mean is that even the introduction of the topics that we're going to do we're going to do that in great detail we're going to do a lot of questions uh, for that topic and remember that there will be i'm telling you this that there will be 15 minute videos a whole video concentrating just on the questions of the topics so that you can relate the concepts to the questions please don't try to learn the methodology okay this is the first step then i have to do this then i have to do that you can of course get away uh, with your uh, grades with that but that's not the point over here try to learn the concept behind all of this and try to have fun with it this is all really really easy stuff this is all really, really simple stuff you just have to try to 
use your head and that is it so that's pretty much it i'll hopefully see each and every one of you who has watched this video in the next video and then we'll be starting off with the complex numbers we'll be officially beginning this course and hopefully i'll see each and every one of you there thank you very much